everybody. I wanted to make a video this week to talk about something really, really important when you're starting your freelancing career, whether it's being a VA or being a writer. And that is the idea of how on earth do I set my prices when I've never done this before? It's a challenge that everyone is going to have to approach and overcome in one way or another. And so I want to talk to you about how you can do that most successfully. The prospect of even beginning to price your work can actually be exciting because you're getting close to landing your first couple of clients, but you have to be able to talk confidently about price in order to be successful, right? You know, we want the people who are interacting with you to know that you come from a place of confidence rather than a place of desperation or uncertainty as it relates to your prices. You want people to know about the value that they're getting for the money as well. And I have a, a great podcast episode coming out about this idea of value-based pricing as well. But when you're in your first job with a potential freelance client, they're going to ask about price in one way or another. It doesn't matter if you're on an Upwork, you know, a job board like Upwork, where the client is going to ask for that information upfront to even evaluate and figure out if they want to talk to you, or if you're actually jumping on a phone call with a potential client and um, they, they will ask for a budget or a, a bid or something like that when you're actually on the call as well. So how on earth do you do this? You've never priced before. You have no idea what the market bears. So I want to give you my top tips for succeeding with setting your prices even when you've never done this before, never had a client and are not sure how to price. First of all, do market research. There is no need to reinvent the wheel or take a total shot in the dark about what you should price your work at. One great way to do this that is very low cost and very easy is to actually set a job on a board like Upwork or to post a request in a Facebook group acting as though you're the client. So speak from the place of being your ideal client. Do some market research. What are other people charging? Now, this is not a tried and true method that you should apply to your business all the time. Just because other people are charging $20 an hour or $50 an hour and above doesn't mean that's what you're limited to, but it will give you a general idea of what demand in the marketplace is showing. It's a great starting place. You may actually be underpricing yourself. And I see a lot of freelancers doing this idea of underpricing because they think, well, I'm brand new. I need to land clients, so I can't really charge too much yet. But doing some market research like that can actually help you understand what other people are charging and not just what they're charging, but what they're getting too, right? Like other people who are charging $50 an hour are probably capable of doing that because they're actually getting $50 an hour from the clients that they are quoting. So that's a really powerful strategy to use. So do the market research, do not reinvent the wheel and, and start from square one, go see what other people are charging. The second thing you can do is to think about what would be a good hourly rate for you. Now, not every time that you're working in your business will be a billable hour. A billable hour refers to a situation where you are being paid for what you are doing. When you first start your freelance business, you'll have a lot more marketing hours that are unpaid as opposed to billable hours. This can range a whole lot, but when I got started, it was about 80% marketing and 20% actual client delivery. And as your business grows, that will change. So you will ultimately be doing more delivery of work for clients, although your marketing should never stop because that's what helps you avoid the feast or famine cycle. But having this base idea of an hourly rate can give you some direction to go when you're in the process of trying to give a client a bid or some idea of what they might pay. So let's just use $50 an hour because it's it's a nice even number, easy to understand. So if a client tells you the information about their project and you think it's going to cost, a, you know, it's gonna cost $50 an hour and take you about three hours, that means $150 minimum is what you should quote to the client. When you're new, you have the luxury of taking on these smaller projects. It's a little bit easier to work with these smaller projects. As you grow, you may choose to have a minimum entry point for your clients. But when you're first getting started, a $150 project may be great. It may be something that, that grows and becomes even more perfect for your business. Perhaps that client will give you more work. But it's great practice, right? We don't necessarily want to have your first job be something where you're committing to 50 or 100 hours. What if you hate it? So these smaller hours, or what I call um, the fast and simple jobs, can help you get some practice and realize what you do and don't want to do. And it will also help you adjust your pricing. So you might have actually really underquoted yourself, and you won't know that till you're in the project. But it's much better to spend five hours on a project that you thought was three hours, as opposed to taking on a much longer project where it's taking up all of your time and you're not being paid appropriately. So if you learn the lessons of 
underpricing yourself. Learn it with a smaller project. Using an hourly rate is a great starting point. However, this can generate some confusion with clients who might have unrealistic expectations about how long it should take you to do a particular task. So keep that in mind that quoting your hourly rate usually will not be enough. The client will probably follow that up with how long you think it's going to take. And that presents another challenge, right? Because as a new freelancer, you might not know how long it will take you to do a particular task. And the only way to know for sure is practice. So choose a reasonable estimate, um, telling the client that they, you know, won't be charged for any more than the work that you've quoted is really, really important because no client likes getting an invoice for 10 hours when you had promised them it was going to be three. So if it looks like you misquoted the project, either, you know, finish the project and just to kind of take it as a lesson learned or contact the client and say, you know, the scope of this project has grown tremendously. Perhaps the client contributed to that, right? It's possible that all of a sudden they've dumped much more work on your plate than you anticipated and negotiate from there. But you're going to build more trust with the client if you're really accurate when you first quote them. So really read all the instructions, read all the material they give you. If they don't give you a lot of material, ask to see a sample of what a finished product would look like, something that they think um, looks really good, or something they'd approve to put on their site. Um, and an, even an example of what they don't want can be helpful too. The more you can clarify these instructions, the better your relationship with the client will be, but it will also help you with pricing when you're first getting started as well. Now, this idea of an hourly rate works really well for virtual assistants who are just getting started. If you quote an hourly rate and sell it in packages, for example, four hours for $200 worth of work, it's much easier for the client to know what they are getting um, and just sort of seamlessly transitions into this package rate. So that can be a really powerful way to begin the whole pricing conversation. Now, there's always going to be challenges around pricing, whether it's raising your prices, whether it's phasing somebody out, determining to that you're going to accept only minimum amounts or breaking into a whole new industry and having to price all over again. But these are my top two tips for what to do when you've never, you know, you've never priced before, you know, do the market research, find out what other people are charging. If nothing else, it will give you a base point and then you can kind of adjust around there. And then secondly, select an hourly rate that feels fair to you and do all of the legwork at the beginning of the project to determine how the instructions will assist you with figuring out how long it might actually take you. And then try to hold true to that with your clients. The better you will get at estimating your time and charging them a fair price, the more likely they are to give you testimonials, referrals, continue to work with you, etc. But it's always gonna be a little bit of a trial and error thing when you first get started. And that's okay, because you might learn that you've underquoted, um, you might learn that it's really hard to land clients at the rate that you've chosen. You might even decide that you don't like the type of projects you're working on. And when you take on smaller projects at the beginning, you have the chance to figure this out early on rather than being really committed to a project that just doesn't appeal to you. So so until next time, I look forward to helping you build your freelance business.